Hi guys, Dane here, and welcome to another weekly reading vlog. So, uh, or hopefully weekly, if I get them right. I'm literally just doing the introduction now because otherwise I always forget and leave it a few days. So I'm doing the introduction now, and then I'm sure the next shot will be of some sort of food, knowing me. Or I don't know, maybe I'll finish my book and update you, we'll see. I'm going to do some work now anyway, and a little bit of editing. Mwah. Love ya. Hey, it is uh, 20 to 1. <laughs> I finished reading uh, Manga Shakespeare, Romeo and Juliet. I'm going to give this a uh, 3.5 out of 5. It started out good, but then it kind of lost it a bit, and um, it didn't really work meshing like modern Tokyo with the language of Romeo and Juliet. And a lot of bits felt a bit glossed over, like particularly like the Queen Mab bit, and uh, even the ending felt a little bit rushed. And also it just was a bit weird that sometimes they were in these like 15th century or whatever situations, and then... Other times they were literally in modern day Tokyo, so it didn't it didn't work that well, but it was alright, and uh, yeah. I should also mention here the Toyota Engagement Equation by Tracy Richardson and Ernie Richardson. This is a book that I'm writing like a Sparknotes re style review, 2000 word review for a client. They then turn them into animations. So I'm not fully reading it, but I am kind of skim reading it basically to find the most important stuff and then my main book at the moment is the good man jesus and the scoundrel christ by philip pullman which i've heard very good things about and i'm reading this kind of as like a real life buddy read with uh, bex as well who is currently she's in essex getting well so i have passed on your re kind regards from people as well all right that's me done for a bit i'll catch you tomorrow children and elder pedestrians i may not be able to judge your speed i could step into the road in front of you at 40 miles per hour, 64 kilometers per hour, we need some more time to cross the road. Be patient and allow them to cross in their own time. Do not hurry them by revving your engine or edging forward. People with disabilities. All right, I have got my driving theory test tomorrow, so I'm sitting here listening to the audiobook of the highway code again. Uh, should get that done soon. I'm also still reading The Good Man Jesus and the Scoundrel Christ. I'm really enjoying it so far. Um, not too far into it, but it, it, I am whizzing through, so that's good. And... Uh, I just wanted to mention Anton Chekhov, Gooseberries, number 34 in the Penguin Little Black Classics. I read this in bed last night. Chekhov perfected the short story, as shown in these three moving miniature dramas of love, dread and lies. Uh, I found it kind of boring, to be honest. I'm sure, you know, I've heard great things about Chekhov, and I know he's like a literary master and whatnot, but I, I don't know. It was like three out of five for me. It was all right. Um, I just wasn't really interested in the subject matter or even the writing style really unfortunately but uh it is what it is i've i'm still doing my spark notes of this bad boy the toyota engagement equation engagement equation what uh yeah i'm about halfway through writing that article i had a client call earlier for a client who i'm helping with his book and now i'm going to go and film my uh, next next bookshelf tour i believe cool I might start filming my wrap up early and film it in chunks as well just to make sure that it's slightly on time because I think I've read 38 books so far this month and I've still got after today there are still five full days for me to read and, and I'll probably finish this today this Philip Pullman bad boy I think Bad, why am I saying bad boy today? And then I might read The Boy in the Striped Pajamas by John Boyne. All right, I am uh, off to the open mic. I'm just going to have a pint and then I'm going to go to Sainsbury's and then I'm going to come home. All right. I made these like millionaire bars. Shroom dogs with brown sauce on toasted wholemeal bread with this delicious free from garlic and herb coconut based alternative to soft cheese yum yum look at it oh my god and i'm watching peter james read from his book this is amazing also hey google pause i want to do an investigation here this is uh peter james reading reading from his book what's what's this what's this holy shit what is this oh i recognize that book <laughs> I'll uh, give you an update later. I, I passed my test, my theory test, 
and I have just made myself this delicious quinoa bowl with vegetables and hummus. Hello, all right, um, I'm gonna give you a quick update on a couple of books that I read. So I finished reading The Good Man Jesus and The Scoundrel Christ by Philip Pullman. I gave this a pretty solid four, maybe even a 4.5 out of five. It's basically like a retelling of the life of Jesus, except he has a, a twin brother called Christ. And it was really impressive how the two of them had very distinct kind of characters. And I usually don't like retellings, but I, I did enjoy this one and I thought it kind of added a lot to the whole I don't know, I guess the discussion about religion. Now, Pullman is, isn't exactly uh, positive in, in his writings about religion, but I don't think, you know, I think you can enjoy this no matter what your religious beliefs are. It's just a book that kind of makes you think, but also it's just, I mean, it says here on the back, this is a story and it is a story and it's very well told. And then I moved on to The Boy in the Striped Pajamas by John Boyne and I'm probably gonna get some hate for this because I didn't like it. Um, and for quite a lot of reasons. <laughs> So, I don't know, let me see, let me go back through. Right, I, I wrote a list of questions I had. I, in fact, I'll just, I'm just gonna, I think for this, the easiest way is I'm gonna read the review that I've written for, uh, for socialbookshelves.com for my book blog, and this is also my Goodreads review. Uh, so I gave it two out of five. I said I'd heard such good things about this book and it left me so disappointed I just struggled to suspend my disbelief throughout and it also felt as though the author was constantly trying to exploit the reader's emotions On the back it implied that it was for adults Whereas I felt it was more like middle grade and then you can see the ending coming from a mile away as soon as Bruno Discovers that he can tunnel beneath the fence and into Auschwitz Speaking of which how was he able to spend so much time speaking to a Jewish kid? Where were the guards? Why didn't the kid just climb under the fence and escape? How would a nine-year-old living in Berlin in 1942 never heard of Hitler? And if his father was high up enough for Hitler to be paying them house visits, why wasn't Bruno in the Hitler Youth? And why, at the end, do the Nazis randomly gas an arbitrary group of Jews that happen to be standing together instead of specifically targeting the sick, the elderly, and the unfit to work? Weird. There were some other weird things about it as well, like... It was said by uh, Bruno's teacher that he was reading too much fiction and he needed to spend more time reading his textbooks. Uh, and then his dad was annoyed with him because he said like he hated history and his dad was like well history is what made us where we are and then his dad gave him a copy of uh, Treasure Island and it's like but the schoolmaster said don't give him like stop him reading fiction regardless of whether you agree with that or not that's what this dude said and then you kind of agreed with him because you said he needed to learn more more history and just uh, he just made he just it was just bad decision after bad decision that this kid was making and also I thought it was really condescending like the way that I don't know I feel as though the author was trying to set up like this dramatic irony that you you knew what was going on but the the character didn't but it just sort of seemed like well it's really obvious what's happening even then it would have been like obvious like don't get me wrong I don't think that they, the, the the kid would have heard of Auschwitz because it was a fairly closely guarded secret but he would have known who Hitler was. If you took a nine-year-old off the street in London and asked him who the Queen was, like, or showed him a picture of the Queen, he'd know who the Queen was. You, you just, and like Hitler was like the most powerful man in Germany, arguably in Europe at that time. It just seems, it seems strange to me. And the kid had been taught to do a salute as well. So he's doing the, I almost did it there, but I, I yeah. So I don't know, I just didn't like it. And then, yeah, I'd been told like it's gonna make you cry and this this the kid was annoying me throughout so much that I was like I hope I hope he dies at the end and uh, And then he found this tunnel into into Auschwitz because apparently you can just stand Like at the fence in Auschwitz next to a tunnel out of Auschwitz and talk to Jews and for days on end like day after day after day no one will notice. No one will notice. They don't have guard towers. They don't have like... <laughs> so yeah, I didn't enjoy it very much. Um, yeah. But uh, next, I'm going to give Holes by Louis Sakar a go. And I've heard good things about this one as well. But um, I don't know. I think uh, Catalyst Reads back in the day used to recommend this one. And uh, he had pretty good taste. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling good. Right, so yum yum. Today's quinoa bowl. Hello, oh, I'm blur, there we go. Hello, uh, I have finished reading another book I read. C.B. Cavafy, Remember Body, number 43 of the Penguin Little Black Classics. Moving central verses on nostalgia and desire by the masterful early 20th century Greek poet. Now, I don't even know how I would like categorize the kind of poetry that was in here, 
but I did enjoy it. I just don't really know what I would call it. I also like the fact, again, so it's early 20th century and there was a lot of like, um, uh, well, I assume he was gay or bisexual um, just from the way he was writing anyway, and a lot of um, at least very homoerotic poetry. I'm going to read one for you. I'm going to read uh, just, just a random. I have gazed so much. I have gazed so much on beauty that my eyes overflow with it. The body's curves, red lips, voluptuous limbs, hair as if taken from a Greek statue, always lovely, even if uncombed, tumbling lightly over the snowy brow. The dramatis personae of love that my poetry demanded in the nights of my youth encountered secretly in those nights. So uh, yeah, I gave it like a 3.5 out of 5, it was pretty good. And then I also finished another cookbook, uh, so this is 30 Days of Vegan by Catherine Kidd RD. Now, this is actually basically like a meal plan for people who are doing veganuary or something like that and they want to eat vegan for a month. Um, I didn't follow the meal plan, I just went through and picked out the recipes I wanted to try. There was quite a nice quinoa bowl that I had from this, a few other little recipes, but overall it wasn't particularly good. I'd give it like a three, three out of five, but with the, uh, you know, the acknowledgement that I didn't use it as it's maybe meant to be used, you know? And then I've been cracking on with Holes by Louis Saka, and I'm page 62. I'm pleased to say I'm enjoying this quite a bit. It's on par, maybe, for a five out of five. It's somewhere between four and five at the moment. Taking some notes, I'm hopefully going to review it as well. And uh, yeah, yeah, stoked to keep reading it. So, so that's what I'm going to going to do. And in uh, terms of my writing today, I wanted to mention actually. So, uh, part of the work I'm doing is I'm I basically I've been working with a, a Dutch publishing company. So I proofread uh, their books, um, but they publish like children's sort of fairy tales basically. I'm not sure how much I can say about it, so I'm not even sure if I'm allowed to say this to be honest. But hopefully. We'll be all right. Um, and then also I've got a write, uh, a, an article for a long-term client, which is um, it's like 10 sci-fi novels that are ripe for movie adaptation, which I'm like, I can do that. So yeah, so I'm, I'm off to do some more writing and maybe some filming. I'm gonna like put my jacket on and uh, film some more of my wrap-up. Rip. Indian bread with courgettes and coriander. And I'm watching Ret Sapure on YouTube. They watch people playing video games and then take the mickey. I made a vegan rhubarb and custard bake. It looks good. It is uh, Monday. I didn't do a very good job at keeping you guys updated over the weekend. Uh, basically, uh, Saturday I had like a day off from working and so I had a few drinks. My friend Jordana came over for a bit to do some music and then uh, Dave and Lorraine and I went off to an open mic and I played a few songs and then Sunday I was very hungover so I just worked and didn't really do any filming. I've also got this spot under my beard and I think it's like an ingrowing hair around there somewhere. It's horrible. Um, so yeah, so as it's Monday I'm going to quickly update you on the uh, the books that I finished reading and then we'll, we'll wrap this thing up. So, so we have Charlotte Perkins Gilman, The Yellow Wallpaper, Penguin, A Little Black Classic number 42. This horring semi-autobiographical feminist story of imprisonment and madness scandalised 19th century society. And basically it's kind of like you've got this woman and her husband is like basically not letting her do anything because he thinks her um, state of mind is too vulnerable or whatever and basically he's driving her crazy and then blaming her for being crazy if that makes sense so I can see why it's called like a you know a feminist masterpiece or, or whatever it was uh, it, didn't, it didn't use the word masterpiece it was a very good story though that one was really good and then there was another one in this called so we also have the rocking chair and old water, but really it was the yellow wallpaper that I enjoyed the most and it's also what Charlotte Perkins Gilman's most well known for. Uh, that one story was like a 4 out of 5 and the other two were kind of 3 out of 5, so I'm going to average it out and give it a 3.5 out of 5. Then we have Herman Melville, The Maldive Shark, number 38. Dark, nightmarish sea stories and poems inspired by Melville's, Melville's adventures around the world's oceans in a whaler. So this was kind of like non-fiction, uh, like biology wildlife writing except with some poems thrown in as well and it just wasn't very interesting like this is the first time I've ever read Melville 
I shouldn't say that it wasn't interesting actually because the information was interesting, it was just his delivery of it just bored me to tears. Uh, he has a very dry way of writing that's kind of very overwritten as well and it just wasn't very enjoyable. So I gave it a 2 out of 5. I do have a copy of Moby Dick that I may get to but this hasn't made me want to get to it in any particular hurry. Then we have Holes by Louis Saka and I wasn't too sure what to expect from this but I knew that Catalyst Reads back in the day used to swear by this book and I, I used to quite like the books that he read. And uh, yeah, it was. It kind of reminded me, and in many ways it reminded me of The Long Walk by Stephen King because you've got these kids that are forced to just keep on digging. Except then we kind of understand why they're digging. And actually, that backstory of it, which then kind of took over towards the second half and towards the end, was my least favourite part of it. I actually really enjoyed the digging part of it and the, the way that these kids were being punished and the kind of the psychological aspect of it much more than I enjoyed this sort of thing where you know, we discover why they're digging. So basically the story of this, you've got like a bunch of sort of troubled youths, kids who've been in trouble with the law and whatnot, and they're given the choice, they can either go to jail or go to like a ranch, like Dr. Phil's ranch. And uh, except that at the ranch, they have to dig holes that are like five foot by five foot by five foot. And uh, yeah, it's just a really interesting concept for a book. I think it petered out a bit towards the end, but I still gave it a pretty solid sort of four, 4.5 out of five. Then we have The Station 17 Chronicles by Ollie Jacobs and so these are like three short stories or arguably it's like two novellas and one short story set on Station 17 which is like this research station that's almost like Area 51 in a way in, in, in how it's handled and strange things happen at this station like people go mad when they're there and uh, the stories here kind of follow that happening. Now unfortunately I switched this out as a bedtime book because I wasn't particularly enjoying it. I gave it like a 2.5 maybe 3 out of 5. I think it just wasn't for me but also there were a lot of typos, grammar mistakes, spelling mistakes etc and uh, it just it was worse than usual for an indie book really and it just kind of dragged me out of the story and I just don't think this was Jacobs' best but um you know, I'll still read his stuff though. Okay, then I read The Captain and the Enemy by Graham Greene. So this is basically about, it follows this sort of young man who then grows into an, an, an adult when uh, his father loses him in a, like a poker game, although uh, maybe a chess game or backgammon. It's kind of, uh, it's kind of becomes a legend if that makes sense. And so he's never quite sure. Uh, and he goes to live with somebody called the captain and uh, this woman that the captain loves. And as we get through this book, we start to discover that the captain isn't everything that he says he is. In actual fact, he's kind of a bit like a petty criminal. And so he kind of goes on the run and it just follows this story really. And this guy, he's kind of writing his own version, his own history of him and the captain and his youth. And then he goes to meet the captain himself at the end. And uh, it's very much like a human centered sort of story of interpersonal relationships. Really did enjoy it. I'm a big Graham Greene fan. It's probably like a 3.75 out of five for me. And then I've since moved on to It's a Battlefield by Graham Greene. So uh, this one's really good as well, actually. It's about a man who's kind of been sentenced to die and he's in jail and uh, he's accused of being like a communist and that kind of stuff. It's very much a product, product of its time, but that's what Green was, was great at. And uh, yeah, I mean, he's one of my favorite authors for a reason. So really enjoying this one too. But yeah, that pretty much brings us to the end of this week's weekly vlog. So as always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.